and I am really looking forward to sharing with you the wonders of, of creative writing. Okay, Serwyn, tell me your favourite story. Harry Potter. Oh, I love it. Tell me why Harry Potter. I actually don't know why I love it. It's just the way that Harry has to go and do different sorts of things against all the other wizards. So, you know the thing about Harry Potter that I, I'm going to share with you that's really amazing? The characters, the plot, the setting, does it ever stay the same or is it constantly changing? Changing? Anybody? Yeah, it changes. That's what makes a good story, is the character development and the story, how it unfolds. So, you start off with Harry Potter, the first book and being like, what, 11 years old in this fantastic setting, which is Hogsworth. And look at all the different characters involved in that book. So when we're writing a book, or we're writing in general, our characters, our setting, our plot, um, a good guy, a bad guy. Does anyone know, anyone know, by the way, what an antagonist means? Um, Does anyone no, know? No, not really. Not, okay, so it just kind of, it can be your super villain or it can be the bad guy. So who's the bad guy in, in Harry Potter? Who's the super villain? Tell me, tell me. Voldemort? Yeah, so he's a bit of the antagonist in your story and protagonist, of course, is Harry Potter, right? Tell me, what have I just drawn? A triangle. It's a triangle, but it's not. It's what I'm going to call my writing triangle. Anna Rood, where do you think the introduction would be? If I'm going to climb a mountain, I'm going to start where? Okay, servant, whereabouts? At the bottom. Right. When we are doing an introduction, okay, so it includes the introduction. We talk about it and we introduce some of our characters down here. We introduce a bit of what it's the story's going to be about, okay? Why do you think on the back of a book, it tells you an intro, it describes to you a little bit, we call that the synopsis of what the story's about. And you think to yourself, hmm, am I really interested? So when you're writing the story, it's the same thing. You start off introducing, and then you have the rising action. So who can tell me where the rising action goes? Tell me, shout it out. In the middle. Yeah, so so, yeah. so what can happen is your story has to evolve, it has to grow. Annie Rood, where do you think where do you think the climax would be of, of our story? When I'm climbing my mountain, if we've got an introduction and we're at, where do you think it is now? Um the climax might be at the top. Yeah, and that's so I'm gonna call that not the top. I'm gonna to kinda of say the middle ish. Who can tell me what this is? A dragon? A dragon. Yeah. A dragon. Right, now, the dragon, now, I actually really, really like this. This is one of my favourite slides here, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But, can Mappy, um, can you tell me why or what you see the dragon doing? What's the dragon doing? Letting up fire from his mouth. Uh-huh. And, and Creswell, what do you see here? A dark dragon that looks like Charizard shooting out fire. And what about you? Everyone, um, Ibtaj, tell me what you see. Um, I see the dragon's like standing on a cliff and it's like um, shooting fire out of its mouth. Anyone I else think, got any ideas? Tell me. I think I think the dragon is blown fire and I see wings is facing up so I think it's about a fire and I fly and blue fire. What do you think the special qualities or um, abilities of the dragon yeah, might be? Anyone? It might be a fire dragon. Fire. What was that, Iptaj? Like blown fire. What about the fire? What's it what's the purpose of the fire? Like it can use it for defense or talking to other dragons. Yeah, or it could just be like blow. That could be how it breathes. You know what I mean? It might be a fire dragon. It could be. Does anyone know any Creswell? Do you know any more other dragons? Any other types of dragons? Yes. What other? Okay, guys, let's bring in Harry Potter. What type of dragon was this? Eve, I remember this one. A fire goblin. This a fire. 
This was this was the Norwegian dragon. Do you remember? Was this not the Norwegian one? It's not the Norwegian. Norwegian. Norbert the Norwegian dragon. Yeah, look, it's fierce, right? And it does. So if I was to describe him now, I just use the word fierce. What does fierce mean, Mapiud? Mapiud, what does fierce mean? of children stumbled upon a secret entrance to an enchanted menagerie where animals could talk and where they were led by an old wise old owl named right so here's the thing named we're going to come up with this so i have a question for all of you you stopped at you stopped at named you stopped at named because it's your own stone and you don't even, and you can pick whatever name you can so uh, so the menagerie is just do you think that might be somewhere when we say where animals could talk an enchanted menagerie where animals could talk do you think that's magical yeah little bit yeah or do you think that's like our everyday so if we're going to write about something okay we're going to use our creativity aren't we now who can tell me what's going on up here What's happening here? The, the children the um, came into the secret entrance to the enchanted menagerie. So, so you've got these boys and girls, right? And if you look, they've all, they're all quite prepared. What's on their backs? Backpacks. Backpacks. They've all got Man. their backpacks on, right? They're all prepared. They're all holding each other's hands. They've been led in by the wise owl, okay? They're all different ages, correct? Did you say they're all different ages, give or take a year or two? No, no, right? that's why they're holding hands. Right? So, what do you think they're looking down in? Now, remember what I just said to you, to use your imagination? We don't know if this is 100 feet up above, but what could be below them here in this picture? It, it could be a giant forest below Water. them. Water. Any other ideas? Water. Be a fox there. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a fox. Maybe a swamp. Water. Or, 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 or could it be like crocodiles ready to eat them? Yeah. Named? Olive. Olive. Oh, I like it. Olive. Oh, that's a cool name. Olive. All oh, right, that'll do. Olive. Hello, Olive. It's nice to meet you. The children. Oh, didn't you look at that? I'm Olive. So look, look, look. Olive led the children into the forest what comes next um then olive led the children to the forest and uh -huh. he he gave olive gave a map to the children to follow a map to find a hidden treasure children wear what they how did they the feel they, they, they followed um the map were the, were, were the children sad or happy or excited, Car Carwin? Well, the, ch the children were too excited to, to find the hidden <laughs> of the Benaguri. They were so excited, you can see, they could hardly wait to start what? Start st looking for okay. the treasure. What, who comes next? What comes next? Then the tra then the children was one children said that it might be very dangerous to go, but the rest of the children didn't listen. Indirect dialogue, internal. There's lots of different ways of things that you learn. It's not just about thoughts and stories. There's lots to this. Okay, so. I am looking for a certain girl who's not saying much. Where did she go? All right, Ed Taj, Anirud, I'm not hearing your thoughts. I'm coming to you guys now. Anirud, what comes next in the story? Um, they were, they, they went finding the, they were, they went finding the hidden treasure. The map. And An isolated place. Point, did you say pointed to a patch? What did you say? To a deserted alleyway through the forest. Okay. Th through the forest. 
my paid. The children look, come on, Carwin, this is your opportunity. The children looked at the map and they pointed to a deserted alley through the forest. And they went, when they got inside, when they got inside the menagerie, um, they, they showed, they were speaking to a animal and, and the animal took. What do I need at the end of that? A full stop. Uh, try again. Question mark. Question mark. When we're doing creative writing, don't think for a moment you don't have to work on that as well. Punctuation. You have to still write semi correctly. What are you doing in my kingdom? Okay, so now what comes next? Question mark. Question mark. Anyone know questions for Paula? I'm gonna tell you something. You know, Absolutely. you know the names, the children, Jessica and James. Uh -huh. Those children, those are alliterations because they have they have the same letter starting. Oh, yeah. I'm impressed. So you definitely would be a good candidate for creative writing. Creswell, give me some more details. Very well done, by the way. I was thinking because we got. All of the owl, we should have got wheeled the lion because that would be alliteration. Oh yeah. All your own ideas. So look, you could you could write a story about an assignment about imagine a world where animals can speak, write a conversation between you and your favourite animal, or if you could travel back in time or into the future, where would you go and what adventures would you have? Or draw a dream you had recently and write a short story about the adventures that unfolded. Lion, look at me. Yeah, you know, I love, do you want me to tell you something? Do you know why we, we often remember on The Very Hungry Caterpillar? It's one of my favourite, favourite stories, do you know that? Do you know, the reason for it is, remember at the beginning we talked about, about colours, about, sorry, about how you can collaborate? The Very Hungry Caterpillar has got the illustrations. So once upon a time there's a hungry caterpillar and he munches and munches and munches and he's he's trying to get fuller and fuller and he eats so much that he's, he's bored with all the leaves and the first day he eats one apple. You see a picture of one apple. The second day he eats two plums. The third day three oranges, four watermelons, five strawberries and then he ate, do you remember this story? A lollipop, a piece of salami, a slice of Swiss cheese and on the seventh day he felt sick. So yeah. he ate a juicy green leaf. Then he transforms, goes to sleep in his cocoon and transforms. What's really nice about it is the way it's illustrated. It's just spectacular. And I, don't know, I don't know how can a caterpillar eat four watermelons in real life. Even a, a human cannot complete a, a, at least one watermelon in at least four two to three minutes. Do you know why creative writing is going to be really amazing for you? Because mm, you're going to be a brilliant critical thinker. Explore. I want to be... Uh, I want to explore the secrets of the universe. Oh, I'm coming with you then. Boys and girls, I had lots of fun with you.